So you've probably heard about the hype and noise about the eLRS system, but what exactly is Express LRS? Today we talk about it and five reasons why you should consider going with the eLRS system. All right, so what exactly is Express LRS? The best way to put it, it's a new and different approach to a protocol for the FPV and just the RC world in general. So let's just talk about what we have currently as protocols. The most common, most likely will be the FR Sky, D8, D16, you probably have RXSR. You also have other protocols on the market like, I don't know, Crossfire. Now a protocol is what we use, it's almost like a language, a handshake to communicate from your radio to your drone. Now these different protocols and languages have positive and negatives. Some of them are cheap, really affordable. Some of them are good for short range with low latency. Some of them are really good for long range, but not till recently did we get something that has everything in one. That's where the Express LRS system comes in. It's a protocol, it's relatively new, it has really good range, it has really good latency or low latency, it's really affordable, and it gets updated regularly, like almost every night. And we'll talk about the reasons why that happens. So let's talk about the five reasons why you should consider going with the ELRS system. The first thing is it's open source. Open source means that anyone can contribute to this project. Typically with certain manufacturers, say FR Sky, these guys are limited to their language. And usually another manufacturer or a hobbyist cannot create that specific equipment, that, that specific hardware. The same thing is true with say Crossfire. This is a TBS Crossfire Nano module. And although it's great, you cannot tap into that protocol or into that language. If you do like that protocol or you do want to go with say Crossfire, you have to buy it from TBS. No other manufacturer can make that product and then use that handshake or that communication language. Now, the good thing about open source is that anyone can make the product. In this case, I have a beta FPV ELRS module. Pretty cool. I haven't even used it yet. We're going to use it soon though. But yes, this is the module. It looks very similar to the Crossfire module here. And this is just one company making that. You have other companies also making it. In fact, I could make this module in the studio right now if I wanted to. That's the great thing about open source. The same thing goes for the receiver. This is a receiver right here. And this thing is pretty amazing. This one here is by a company called JHEMCU. And many companies are making this, including Beta FPV as well. And this doesn't matter. As long as the components in here and in the module can communicate in that protocol and have a handshake, it doesn't really matter. Now, there are a lot of benefits to that. One being anyone can make it, obviously, which is good. So say, for example, you just wanna, you're very good with tools and soldering, you can make your own module and receiver. The second thing is it reduces the potential for having a proprietary system or a monopoly, meaning anyone can make it. Uh, in this case, this is a pretty cool system. Uh, the Crossfire system, there's really no flaws in it. Um, maybe the latency isn't the best, but it's also maybe a little bit too expensive, but no one can really tap into it. If this thing breaks, I do have to send it back to Crossfire or Black Sheep and they have to uh, do the repairs on it. Now, because of that, you do have a lot of assistance, a lot of help in the FPV community. With that said, because it is open source and there's a lot of uh, players in there, um, you do have a lot of updates, which is good. Progress is gonna be very quick. So one day you'll have a system where someone makes it and then in two weeks, maybe less than a week, someone improved on the system. In fact, when this Express LRS first came out, there was a big push about, hey, let's flash this, let's flash that now. You don't have to flash the module, everything is ready to go. It just shows you how fast things have evolved because it's an open source system. People are working around the clock trying to make the system better. All right, so the second reason why you wanna consider Express LRS is because of the size. Now, take a look at this receiver. Um, you probably can't even see it in here. I haven't even opened the bag yet. Let's just do that, let's open this bag right here. You're like, oh yeah, it's small. No, it's tiny, guys. This thing fits on my finger. 
and this is the whole package with the antenna. Here's your Crossfire, and this is the smallest receiver by Crossfire, this is the Crossfire Nano. And look at the size difference. It's probably, I don't know, 55%. Now, what that means is that you can put this thing into numerous drones, not only large drones or even three and a half inch drones like this, where weight is somewhat of a consideration, but you can put these things into some really tiny whoops, some really small drones where weight is really, really an issue. Now, if you combine the technology in here with the weight savings, I mean, that's amazing, guys. You can put this thing anywhere. So that's what's so exciting. And we're just like six months into this technology. So it's probably gonna get better, probably gonna get smaller. And yeah, guys, you have a lot of options. Okay, the third reason why you might want to consider going with the ELR system is its range, the long range. These things are natively made to have really good range with low power consumption and with low power output. Now, we know that the Crossfire system is probably one of the best, probably still is the best as far as long range is concerned. This technology is great, but it is proprietary, so you do have to pay the bucks for their research and labor here. But this thing here is a pretty close second. Um, now, Express LRS, they pride themselves on, yes, just the fact that the range is good. And you have different versions here. Um, you have 2.4 gigahertz, you have the 915 or the 900 megahertz, and then you have the 868s for the EU uh, countries out there. But yeah, guys, this thing is made for long range. Even the antenna that they provide is directional, so it's made for that. Now, this is not really a long range drone, but having the long range capability means that you're probably gonna have a lower chance of fail safe in your drone. So maybe this thing might have a range of 10 kilometers, but I have no, I mean, I have no intention of flying my drones 10 kilometers. And that is really good. I mean, that's confidence inspiring, it's reassuring if you invest a lot of money into your drones. The last thing you wanna have is a drone fail safing, especially over some bad terrain or over water. We'll be testing this in a few days, guys, so if you're interested in seeing the range on this thing and if it works, yeah, hit that subscribe button, you'll be notified whenever I do drop that video. So the fourth reason why you wanna consider the ELR system is the low latency. We talked about the long range, but now we have low latency. And why is that important? That's important because Whenever you do make an input on your controller, you want the drone to respond as quickly as possible. It gives you a better experience, and it's particularly important if you are doing some drone racing. So a lot of guys compete in drone race, and yeah, you can get better times, uh, better response, uh, better accuracy with just a low, latency, a low latency system. As I said before, there's other manufacturers who have a low latency system, but they don't combine the long range and the low latency in one. Now, Express LRS is pretty awesome. You have them in numerous flavors. We talked about the three here. Um, the 950 megahertz and 900 megahertz is very similar to the traditional uh, TBS Crossfire, which is good for long range. Now, though those have really decent uh, latency, it's not as quick as some of the newer technology. Now, what most guys are going to or most manufacturers are going to is the 2.4 gigahertz and express lrs is doing the same thing now if you are not satisfied with the 950 megahertz latency you can go to a faster latency uh, which is the 2.4 gigahertz and this is exactly what we have right here the one i have here specifically from beta fpv is the 2.4 gigahertz lower latency now there is a small compromise with the 2.4 versus the 915 or 868 as far as range it's a little bit less range so you will compromise a little bit but with the range and the latency you get from 2.4 gigahertz it's probably a really decent trade-off so the fifth and final reason you want to consider express lrs is as you always know is the price guys the price the price the price now that's a relative thing, guys. Um, a lot of guys will say that Crossfire is expensive. In fact, um, it took me a while to go to Crossfire. I was using uh, FR Sky just because I wasn't gonna fly pretty far and 
this, let's just be honest, a lot of the equipment, the receivers and the transmitters are relatively priced. You can get a good Air Force Sky receiver for 15 to $20. You get five of those, you're pretty good. Now, the more high-end receivers, like the ones on the Crossfire, they start around 20 bucks. So it's a bit more expensive. And that's because they have control over this, meaning no one can make this, they can set their price. And if you want this technology, then they'll dictate the price if that's what you want. So just for comparison, this is pretty decent. And this starts at 20 bucks. This thing right here is pretty, pretty decent, really small, pretty decent. And it starts around 10 to $12. I bought this one here for $13. Has a small little ceramic antenna on here. The entrance price for that is pretty cheap. Now the same can be true about the transmission or the module here. This is a TBS Crossfire Nano module and this thing goes for $60. In comparison, this module right here, the transmission one from Beta FPV does the same thing, $40. So yeah, guys, and I'm sure with time and technology, this thing will also go down in price. So the price, the fact that it's open source, the fact that anyone can make it, it also increases competition and also lowers the price for us, which is in the hobby. Now these require a little bit more work. It's more of a hobbyist type of system. So it does require more steps, more hoops to jump through to get the whole system going. But from my understanding, once the system is up and going, it's fairly simple. So yeah, guys, you can be the judge of that because I will be doing a setup of the Express LRS system in my next video. So if you're interested in that, hit that subscribe button there for you to be notified whenever I do drop that video. In fact, I'll be doing that right now, actually, after I finish filming this one. So you guys, let me know what you think down below and I will see you in that next video. Thanks for watching. Peace.